Greetings, everyone. This is the Gardening Snail of Livingston, California, just trying to keep the community informed and local government as honest as possible. In this video, we will be going over the agenda for the November 15th, 2022 City Council meeting agenda and looking over some of the details in the staff reports that might be of interest to you. There will be a closed session meeting before the regular meeting. On the agenda, a performance evaluation of the city manager. The regular meeting is scheduled to begin at 7 p.m. All members of the public are encouraged to participate in the meeting via teleconference by calling 520-525-8911. Additionally, the meeting will be streamed on YouTube Live. Any writings or documents pertaining to an open session item provided to a majority of the members of the legislative body less than 72 hours prior to the meeting shall be made available for public inspection by email if requested. Public comments can be submitted via email at citycouncil at livingstoncity.com. Comments must be received by 2 p.m. on the day of the City Council meeting in order for them to be distributed to the Council prior to consideration of the matter. You will need to provide meeting date, item number, name, email, and comment. Please limit to 300 words or three minutes. Please include public comment in the subject for the email. Written comments will not be read aloud at the meeting, but will be reported as received for the record. If you do not receive an acknowledgement of receipt by 4 p.m., please call the City Clerk's Office at 209-394-8041, extension 121. Note, this technology is not a guaranteed method. After the call to order is citizen comments. This section of the agenda allows members of the public to address the City Council on any item not otherwise on the agenda. Comments are normally limited to three minutes. Followed by awards presentations and proclamations, a years of service recognition of former Police Chief Soria. While we're here, let's go down a little historical side road. Chris Soria was captain of the Livingston Police Department for several years and was interim police chief at least twice, as I recall. The first time I remember was after Chief Eldridge retired, interim police chief Silva retired, and police chief Dunver left to go to Gustine. The second time I remember took place before Chief Markle was hired, which was after Chief Chavez had been hired. Then both Chief Chavez and Captain Sori had decided on when they were both going to retire. A succession plan had been written, and shortly after that, the sudden departure of Chief Chavez to Gustine. Moving on with the agenda. After the presentation will be announcements and reports, followed by the consent agenda. Items on the consent calendar are considered routine or non-controversial and will be enacted by one vote, unless separate action is requested by the city manager or a city council member. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless members of the city council or city manager request that a specific item be removed. Now, item number two has been appearing on every consent agenda recently. Items three and four are also regulars. Items five and six are meeting minutes from council meetings in May. Item 7 authorizes the rental of the building for the future recplex to Arcalian Farms. Item 8 is about the housing element and how much it will cost to join in with the county to prepare it. Item 9 is about creating a capital improvement plan for the current fire station. There are three public hearings. The first is about annexing land into a community facilities district. The second is about funding for low for to moderate housing projects. 
The third is about how a community development block grant for COVID-related assistance for rent, mortgage, and utility was used. Here's a couple snippets from the May 12th special council meeting. The council interviewed applicants for the Parks and Rec Commission and discussed creating an ad hoc committee to update the fireworks ordinance, as well as a closed session discussion about two cases of potential litigation. During the May 17th regular meeting, some of the items included more interviews for the Parks and Recs Commission, discussing the qualification of the applicants, and making appointments to the Commission, discussing funding for a fireworks show, and assigning council members to the Ad Hoc Committee for a Fireworks Ordinance Update, and assigning council members to an Ad Hoc Committee on Homelessness. Put on the list for future agenda items was a time capsule, street renaming, tobacco issue, and a residential lawn replacement program. Here's a few details from the staff report about the rental of the RecPlex to Arcalian Farms. Staff recommends that City Council adopt a resolution to authorize the City Manager to execute a lease agreement between Arcalian Farms and the City of Livingston. The city purchased the Livingston Farmers Association building at the corner of 6th and D Street. The state has provided clearance for the city to enter into an agreement with Arcalian Farms. Construction on this property is not due to begin until September 2023. Arcalian Farms will be using the 13,000 square feet and pay the city $2,500 per month for the use. Arcalian Farms will provide insurance of $2 million on the facility as required by our lease agreement. Moving on to the staff report about a multi-jurisdictional housing element. Staff from the cities of Merced, Atwater, Livingston, Gustine, Los Banos, Dos Palos, and the County of Merced are embarking on the region's first multi-jurisdictional housing element. There are some advantages in pursuing a joint effort, including cost savings due to the economies of scale and a cohesive approach to addressing new state requirements on a local and regional basis. The cost for the city of Livingston is $57,522. The city's share of costs will be paid for out of the general plan update impact fee fund. The last housing element update was performed by Mentir Harnish at a cost of $35,750 in 2016. The increase in preparation costs are likely as a result of increased documentation illustrating compliance in meeting state housing development goals. Now a few details from the staff report about refurbishing the fire station. The station requires extensive capital improvement to properly accommodate public service, safety, energy efficiency, apparatus maintenance, staffing, training, physical fitness, and equipment and apparatus storage. Staff recommends the Council approves the allocation of $1 million for the refurbishment of Fire Station 96, funded through reserves in the Community Facilities District 2005-1 Fund and Municipal Facilities Impact Fees Fund. On to the annexation of a property into a Community Facilities District to pay for the impact of new development on public services. There are multiple projects proposed for annexation. A development sitting on 2.37 acres of land, two residential duplexes sitting on 0.27 acres of land, a residential duplex sitting on 0.515 acres of land, three detached residential units sitting on 0.324 acres of land, a development consisting of gas station, food mart, and restaurant site sitting on 0.992 acres of land, a development consisting of an 80-unit apartment site sitting on 3.98 acres of land and a development consisting of three attached housing units sitting on 0.192 acres of land. Next up, 
the plan for the permanent local housing allocation program prepared by self-help enterprises. The intent is to provide a permanent ongoing source of funding to local governments for housing related projects and programs that assist in addressing the unmet housing needs of their communities. Eligible activities include rental housing that is affordable to extremely low, very low or moderate income households, affordable rental and ownership housing, including accessory dwelling units, matching portions of funds into local or regional housing trust fund, matching portions of funds available through the low and moderate housing asset fund, capitalized reserves for services connected to the preservation and creation of new permanent supportive housing, assist persons experiencing or at risk of homelessness, accessibility modifications in lower income owner occupied housing, efforts to acquire and rehabilitate foreclosed or vacant homes and apartments, home ownership opportunities, including but not limited to down payment assistance, fiscal incentives made by a county to a city within the county to incentivize approval of one or more affordable housing projects. The annual allocation for the city of Livingston is $108,839 for a five-year total of $653,038. The city of Livingston's proposed five-year plan activities are provide development loans for the construction of affordable apartments. 5% of each annual allocation can be used to cover administrative costs associated with the administration of the plan. Staffing and overhead costs directly related to carrying out the eligible activities are activity cost, not subject to the cap on administrative cost. Wrapping up now with the closing out of the Community Development Block Grant. The city was awarded $91,159 in a Community Development Block Grant coronavirus funding in May 2021 to provide low to moderate income clients with emergency rental mortgage and or utility assistance. The program provided forgivable loans to low to moderate income clients for a maximum assistance of $5,000 per household. 21 loans were provided, one for rental assistance, four for mortgage assistance, and 20 for utility assistance. The grant expired on April 21, 2022. Upon approval, the city will submit the final closeout documents and disencumber the remaining funds for $2,086.64. If you like what I do here, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Facebook. And don't forget the mandatory disclaimer. Editorial content is my own as a resident of Livingston and City Council watcher since at least 2007 and does not represent the views and opinions of the City Council or the City of Livingston and does not represent any kind of legal advice.